Hello friends, today we are going to see the selection criteria of a sensor where we've seen various sensors and the definition of a sensor and various selection criteria. As you've seen, the mechatronics come with the mecha and come with the tronics. So, in the mechanical parts, there are two parts is there. What is that? One is the sensors, another is the actuators. So, first today we will see the sensor part. So, the selection criteria of a sensors is our topic and the criteria start with the definition of a sensor. So, what is the definition of a sensor? It's a simple definition. What is that? The electrical device, it's an electrical device that consists of components and that are used to measure any other physical quantities. So what are the physical quantities? It can be temperature, it can be light, it can be pressure. So various physical quantity is to be measured by the devices. So electrical signal is usually either voltage or it can be current. And that current and voltage signal is to be determined the values of appropriate physical quantities means what if the physical quantity is measured or the sense by the signals that has to be converted at the voltage or can be current so the device is sensor now the plot diagram as i'm saying the simple definition is shown here with the plot diagram so the physical quantity it can be temperature pressure or can be light that we sense by the sensor and that sensor converted that signal into electrical quantity. Electrical quantity can be voltage or can be current. Now, there are various examples of a sensors. Now, we'll start with the different parameters. So, what are that? So, temperature sensor, light sensor, ultrasonic sensor, pressure sensor, IR sensor, biosensor, magnetic sensor, analog sound sensor and vibration sensor. So here is the list of various examples of a sensor. So all this list you have seen here is an physical parameter sensors. But other than this, there are another parameters for the sensors like water level sensor, LDR sensor, analog sound sensor and electricity and current sensor. So the simple thing is that LDR sensor, LDR is light dependent resistor sensor. So depending upon the light is falling or that particular sensor, the resistor is to be changed. In the same manner, analog sound sensor, there are various sensor which can be sense the sound which is analog as well as the digital. So the analog sound sensor is a simple of a human voice or you can consider an any other prototype science sound sign now the water level sensor is also used in the industry as well as home automation now water level sensor is also used not only in industry but also in home purpose in the same way Electricity sensor is not only used in the industry as well as a home automation also. So, electricity sensor is sense a certain fluctuation of a electricity which are used in our circuit board. Now, the current sensor. If current sensor sensibility is sensed by the particular sensor that has to be converted again and particular signals so it can be signals current sense by the signals and again it converted into current is not the manner it can be in voltage or it can be in digital form so the current sensor is also there now we'll see another different types of sensors so here is different type of sensor where proximity sensor ultrasonic sensor soil moisture sensor are used for the agriculture purpose in the same way LDR smoke sensor gas sensor 
are used in industry purposes. Now the color sensor and the alcohol sensor are used in the chemical industry and LM35 is used to sense the temperature is also in the industry purpose. Now rain sensor, PIR sensor, touch sensor is an another sensor which is used to measure the physical quantity. Now the IR sensor here is two type of IR sensor is there for the transmitting side as well as receiving side. So IR sensor is with the transmitting as well as the receiving. The same examples of the IR sensor is our home remote. In the same way heartbeat sensor is also used and the IR receiving sensor is also used. Now as you see there are selection criteria is also there. That means what if a particular sensor is work in particular manner and depending upon that application which sensor which have to be used and which sensor should be select that selection criteria is used. Now the certain features have to be considered when we choose the sensor. What are that that is given below we we'll start with the accuracy. So accuracy should be ideally high okay and the type of accuracy is point accuracy percentage of scale accuracy and the span accuracy means what one particular condition we consider our accuracy should be absolutely accurate okay and it can be in point accurate it can be in a scale accurate or it can be span accurate. Now the next part is the stability. So stability maintained under abnormal condition. The condition can be normal or can be abnormal means what if the sensor is moving certain weight if the uh, sensor with having certain additional weight or it can be power fluctuation or power failure is happened. So under any abnormal condition our sensor should be work that is the main thing and it is called stability. So under any abnormal condition our output of a sensor should be stable. Now the next part is in high sensitivity and good resolution. So sensitivity of a particular sensor is always high is any condition and it gives our output in high resolution. Now the environmental condition is can be affected by the various physical parameters it can be light or it can be humidity. So if the temperature increases if the humidity is increased it can be affected with the sensitivity limit of a sensor but ideally uh, in environmental condition in any environmental condition it should be work at a particular condition it has to be work. Now the next part is the range. Range of a sensor it should be limit with the dynamic range means what the range measuring range of a sensor start with the minimum and end with the maximum. So the output should be give with the sensor with the minimum range also and the maximum range also. And the, and the next part the calibration and calibration essential for the most of the measuring devices as the reading change with the time. As you know first of all the sensor is assembled in particular condition or in particular area. That is that has to be work but as time goes on the sensitivity can be loose but in ideal way the calibration part of a sensor or you can say the sensibility of a particular sensor should not to be loose that is called calibration. Now the next part is the resolution the smallest increment detected by the sensor what is that? That is the same thing in the range means what if we have to be sense 
a particular signal that can be high or that can be low but high signal is that that can easily detected by the sensor but in the manner of the low sensor so the low signal has to be captured with the good output has to be there so the resolution is to be for low sensor now the next part for the cost the cost ideal should be low and the chooser sensor suitable for the condition so what is that for the chosen suitable condition our cost should be low in ideal way now the power consumption thing in power consumption low and should be work in the given power sensing means what our power sensing ability of a sensor should be low it can be happen that the sensor working with the external power or the sensor can be work with the it itself power so there are two types of power so the power consumption as on time goes it can be ideally work now the next part is repeatability what is that the reading that varies is repeatability measure under the same environment means under the same environment our repeatability of a sensor should be low what is that means if a particular environment is changing with the time or it can be change with any physical parameters our repeatability of the output of a sensor should be less now the next part is ease of maintenance ease of maintenance is the last part for the selection of the criteria and the most important thing with the repairing should be easy with the less cost so the less cost of the ease of maintenance is related with the cost manner and the maintenance manner so what is that if particular sensor is placed in particular area and their cost depending upon that applications so if the application is high obviously the sensor sensitivity also high and for it is related with their cost okay if the cost is increasing highly and highly so the maintenance should be low if it is not happened then the sensor highly working is not in use in the same way if the sensor cost is low and the maintenance can be high also it it does not depending upon their cost purposes so obviously the ease of maintenance and the ease of cost is are inversely proportional okay so here we are seeing the various selection criteria of the sensor and here we end our topic thank you